Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Volunteer State Community College in Gallatin, Tennessee, for today's doubleheader action between the visiting Cumberland Junior Varsity Squad and the Ball State Pioneers. Game 17 of the year for Vol State here in game one. Come in with a 5-11 and 11 record after dropping 3-2 to Chat State on Sunday and Monday. Hoping to get back in the win column here today against the Junior Varsity Phoenix from Cumberland. Right down the road in Lebanon, Tennessee. Umpires are here and they want to get started early. So let's get to the Toyota of Gallatin starting lineups. First for the visiting Junior Varsity Phoenix Leading off playing shortstop, Hunter Williams. Batting second playing right field is Josh Wood. Gaines Hassin, the third baseman, will bat third. Caden Birch at first base hitting cleanup. Left fielder Ben Sills will bat fifth. Center fielder Wyatt Hurt in the sixth hole. Luke Manning behind the plate batting seventh. Jaron Kaiser I'm going to go with, K-E-Y-S-E-R. Playing second base at center field. Could be Keezer, but I'm going to go with Kaiser. Dylan Johnson, the DH, he'll bat ninth. And on the mound for Cumberland, Bryant Rascal. And for the Pioneers, Logan Molnar leads off, plays shortstop. Brady Nepper, who was on this JV squad last fall, will bat second and play second base. Stephen Bell in right field, batting third. Cannon Lewis, the cleanup hitter. He's the DH. Connor Paul batting fifth, playing first base. Left fielder Gage Hoover bats sixth. Christian Dunn behind the plate, batting seventh. Landon Litterman down at the hot corner. He will hit in the eighth spot. And Reggie Cooper patrolling out in center field, batting ninth. And on the mound for his first appearance of the year, freshman right-hander Caden Trigg, 5'10", 155 pounds, from Bell Buckle, Tennessee. Went to Rockvale High School. Business management major and the son of Mike and Karen Trigg. His grandparents, Papa and Mimi. Not sure where they live. They'll have to uh, email me in here. I don't have some information for Caden, although I recall his parents last year when he was committed to come here from Rockvale High School. They were listening in to a couple of the broadcasts and emailed the show at tresports at gmail.com. And I'm going to assume they are here in attendance today. Head coach for the Cumberland Phoenix Junior Varsity is Drew Lowe, graduate assistant for Ryan Hunt, who's the head coach of their varsity squad. Head coach for the Pioneers, you see him out there giving the ground rules here at Pioneer Field. It's Jim McGuire in his third year. 26 years at MTSU. 20 as assistant and 6 as a head coach. I think this is year number 36. Started at Wren Lake in 1989. Four years there had 220 wins. I mean, that is a bunch. He played, he had 336 decisions in a four year period, which shows on the record that I have as a head coach at MTSU, is at 162 wins. Prior to this year, 61 with the Pioneers. He is looking to get number 67 with Vol State here in game one. Our umpires for today's game, Daniel Rios will work behind the plate. Devin Neely out on the bases. So Molnar, Nepper, Bell, Lewis, Paul, Hoover, Dunn, Luderman, and Cooper. As you see, the Pioneers taking the field and they're all whites. We will get to our national anthem here. Of course, if you're with us on a regular basis, you know that we can't play the national anthem on YouTube for you. Unpatriotic folks they are. Please, that's social media. Please rise for the so Braxton Alexander is asking everyone to rise now. We will mute and be right back after the national anthem.
Braxton Alexander says. Play ball. Play ball. We are set for a beautiful day today here in Middle Tennessee, in Gallatin, Tennessee, 20 miles northeast of Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, up Highway I-65, and cut over Vietnam Veterans Boulevard. I think Christian Dunn just caught that baseball. It would hit Jim McGuire right in the left shoulder. That would not have been a happy moment for Coach McGuire or Caden Trigg. His first time on the mound in those white uniforms, Caden Trigg been nursing an arm injury for a while. I believe he got, I'll have to check real quick to see about the fall stats. I think he threw in the fall. He did get in five contests in the fall, five and third innings, give it four hits, seven runs, three earned, walked eight, struck out two batters, did not hit a batter, did not give up a home run. Those are unofficial statistics that just on my scores, score sheets that I kept during the fall broadcast, 20 games that uh, Ball State played. Caden Trigg, a true freshman right-hander. So Gage Hoover will be out in the left. Reggie Cooper in center. Stephen Bell in right. Landon Luderman at third. Logan Molnar at short. Brady Nepper at second. Connor Paul at first base. And Christian Dunn behind the plate. And the first pitch that Caden Trigg delivers in there for a called strike. A great start to his college career as we are underway. At 1 p.m. Central Time, it's ahead 0-2. 72 degrees here. Wind is blowing out the center field slightly. Lots of sunshine. Fastball misses high and away to Hunter Williams, the shortstop. Don't know that... Cumberland's website has the hometowns of their players. Count now goes two balls and two strikes. And pitch just a little bit inside. 2-2 pitch. Grounded to short. Molnar is going to wait back and make a throw over to Connor Paul for the first out. Williams out 6-3. Now batting, number 39, Josh Wood. Josh Wood, the right fielder, steps in. How did we get to there? <laughs> Tell me I'm having problems with my scoreboard already. I'm sure it's operator error. You arrive to the ballpark a little bit late, and... Seems like things don't go quite as smoothly as you would like. Line drive out the left field. Gage Hoover on his horse. He's not going to get that one. Josh Wood's going to pull into second base with an extra base hit in the left center field. Now batting, number one. So Gaines Hassin, the third baseman, steps in. Started to go, held up, but the pitch is called a strike on the outside corner. Another strike called on the inside corner as Caden Trigg gets ahead. O2 pitch could not hold up, and that's three 
pitch strikeout. Hasim down on the check swing for out number two. Now batting number 32, Caden Birch. Caden Birch, the first baseman cleanup hitter, steps in. Another breaking pitch from Trigg down low. Christian Dunn, the transfer from Dyersburg by way of Blinn Junior College. Hometown of Collierville is behind the plate for Caden Trigg's first college appearance, and he gets a call on the inside corner on that breaking pitch. On deck, Ben Sills, the left fielder. Just a little bit low. On the roster, I don't have height and weight or hometown. Caden Birch, probably about 6'3", I'd say at least. I'll go about 210. Enticing pitch there, but Trigg could not get Birch to bite. Hunter Williams grounded out to lead off the game. Josh Wood hit a opposite field double left center field. Hasin struck out. And now we have a full count ministries. Full count. Stay tuned after the game for the full count ministries verse of the game. We'll have one after game one and one after game two. I believe Mimi checked in last night via email and has checked in again today. Ball four. Puts runners now at first and second. Up to bat, number 18, Ben Mimi's Seals. checking in. She's at her desk. Here we go. We've got an email from the Trigg family. Grandparents Mike and Anita Trigg of Nashville. Paw Paul and Mims. Okay. Did I have that as Mimi? I did. I'll change that on my sheet as Ben Sill steps in and looks at ball one. That from Jeremy Trigg. Fouled off to the right side. MGM Industries foul ball. We can see that foul ball through these Beautiful custom windows from MGM Industries. Joe Gaskins and Patrick Stewart with the donation of the custom made windows and installation. 1-1 One is going to draw an elbow there. Now the bases are loaded. So now Jeremy's got to tell me who he is. I don't have any siblings here for Caden. Maybe Jeremy's a brother. First pitch to Wyatt Hurt, center fielder is low and away. Right down the can for that one. Wyatt apparently taking all the way there. After seeing Birch walk and Ben Sills get hit by a pitch, Josh Wood on at third. Trigg trying to get out of it. Fouled back. Sure, he's been waiting for this moment quite a long time. He wasn't envisioning two outs and bases loaded in the top of the first, but breaking pitch catches that inside corner and he gets off the hook with the backward K in the book. Two strikeouts in the inning for Caden Trigg. There's one hit, three runners left on base. Now he's going to be rooting for his. 
teammates to get him some runs here in the bottom of the first. We'll take a break. If you want to join the show, send an email to tresports at gmail.com. Let me know who you are, where you're watching from, who you're rooting for, whether you're on the Cumberland side or the Vol State side. I appreciate uh, having folks join the show. We'll be right back on the Vol State Sports Network. We're back at Vol State, where the Pioneers will come to the plate. Logan Molnar, Brady Nepper, and Stephen Bell to face Bryant Driscoll. I did check the website for Cumberland, and I don't see. It says that Driscoll's a 5'11 freshman, but I don't think it has information as to where he is from. Good looking picture of him, but this tells me height and his classification. First pitch to Logan Molnar in there for a called strike. Pumps that one out to right field. Josh Wood over a few steps into right center field, and he'll make the catch for out number one. Now, Batty. Number three, Brady Nepper. Molnar came in as the having the most hits on the team with 11, also the most runs with 11. All State has had trouble hitting here in the first third of the year, but Brady Nepper gets a hold of one to deep left field, and he has just left the yard into the parking lot on the first pitch that he saw from Brian Driscoll. And he puts one on his old teammates. In the fall, Fall State played against Cumberland. Brady Nepper was in the lineup. I believe he played short or second. Transferred at the, right after the Christmas break. And he has just his, hit his first collegiate home run against his former teammates. Congratulations to Brady Nepper, freshman from Greenbrier. Tennessee, Stephen Bell steps in. First pitch he sees is way high and outside. That's the Framework Athletics first run of the game. Brady Nepper sitting on a fastball there. Guessing, actually, I, I didn't even see the... I saw the pitch. I wasn't recognizing breaking or not. Bell gets a fastball and his skies it out the right center field. Josh Wood back. He's not going to catch that one. It goes over his head. High sky here. He did not have that read at all. I assume he lost that one in the sun. It'll be a sun-filled double for Stephen Bell. He got that one high. Let's see how they score that here. My score sheet showing up as a double, so back-to-back -back extra base hits. Now Cannon Lewis steps in. Sees a strike called at the letters. Lewis, a transfer from Roan State Community College, hitting 273, couple home runs, five RBIs. 
Runner goes, pitches a ball, throw down to third base, and Bell is in there. Stephen Bell's fourth stolen base in seven tries. Slice just foul down that first base line, just past the bag. Driscoll ahead, one ball, two strikes to the Pioneer DH with Connor Paul standing on deck. Swing and a miss, drop ball, but tag is applied. Strikeout for out number two. Connor Paul steps to the plate, freshman from Ravenwood High School. Leading the team and hitting 296. Eight for 27, has a double. No long balls as of yet. Change up misses outside. Connor Paul expecting to get a lot of work at first base after Brody Melton got hurt last week. Out with a broken bone or two in his hands. Connor Paul, 6'2", 210-pound freshman, general studies major here. Looks at a pitch. Must have missed down. Like a changeup. Son of Jonathan and Ama Lee, Paul. Hello to ma'am out in Tulsa. Maybe she's listening in again today. A frequent listener and occasional emailer. Actually, one of the top emailers. Jeremy is Caden's uncle, is what I hear. There's ball four. Runners at the corners brought to you by Line to Line. Thanks to Stephen Dotson over at Line to Line and Bill Marbury at Game Time Sports Fields for their support of Vol State baseball and softball. Gage Hoover steps in. Looking for an RBI or two. He's going to not get one for Stephen Bell as that ball goes high and inside. Stephen Bell's going to come in to score. The second run of the ball game. On the wild pitch. Luke Manning behind the plate. Had that one glance off of his glove, but he had to jump out of that crouch pretty quick to even get a glove on that one. Hoover stands in with two out. High fly ball out to deep right center field. Back goes Wyatt Hurd. He's back at the track. That ball is off the wall. Hoover, round second. He's going to head to third. As Gage Hoover with a two-out triple. He was feet away from leaving the yard out there by the rock place. Number 23, Christian Dye. Sign out. Just between the game time sports fields and framework athletics. Ball State leads three to nothing. We've had a home run, a double, and a triple in the inning. Haven't had the single yet. Christian Dunn steps to the plate. Dunn started to go. I'm not sure if that was on the call or on maybe it. I thought it might have even tipped his bat. One ball, one strike to Pioneers catcher Christian Dunn. He hits one high out to left center field. Ben Sills is going to give way to Wyatt Hurt. He's going to make the catch for the third out. Ball, about three really high fly balls in this inning. One left the yard, one hit off the wall, one landed right at the warning track. Ball State with three runs on three hits. No errors, one runner left on base. 
Scheduled for seven innings here in game one of the doubleheader. Ball State leads three to nothing. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Toyota of Gallatin, of course, one of our large sponsors with a brand new scoreboard out there in left center field. Big thanks to General Manager Eric Carr and the General Sales Manager and the Facebook famous actor, Jake Thompson. If you want to you can go see Coach McGuire on a Facebook commercial for Toyota of Gallatin. It's a pretty unique commercial and I thought Coach McGuire did a great job. Go on Facebook and uh, search for Toyota of Gallatin and uh, take a look at that one. Johnny Lynn, the men's basketball coach, is also in one of those commercials. Also, I'd like to thank Right Rug Flooring for their installation of the carpeting in here. Kerry Gilbert, a salesman. Kerry Gilbert with a K, K E A R Y, Gilbert, a buddy of mine. And he had a crew come in here and install some carpet squares after my wife and I came up here and de installed the old carpeting. Also, I'd like to thank my wife for all her hard work. She did a lot of the painting up here in the press box and the design work. So, Susan Reese, who's on her way down to Mississippi to see our grandkids leading off number four luke we head to the manning. top of the second luke manning steps in caden right okay. yes. trig back out for his second inning of work stranded the bases loaded with a backwards k he gets luke manning's First pitch in there for a called strike. And gets ahead 0-2 as Manning swings over the top of a fastball. Luke Manning, Jaron Kaiser, Dylan Johnson, the bottom three in the Cumberland Junior Varsity lineup with the face Caden Trigg, and he gets swing and a miss on the breaking pitch. Christian Dunn with a nice backhand and then a tag of Manning. That's three strikeouts. Now, now for Caden with a C trig. Five. Mike Trigg's brother is Jeremy. Listening in, watching his nephew pour in the strikes here in the top of the second. That breaking pitch got a sharp angle to it when he gets to the pay. That, that takes a quick left turn. 1-1. One, one, swing and a miss. Jaron Kaiser, the second baseman. Close on that breaking pitch. Just me and Braxton Alexander up here in the press box. His ground ball to Luterman. He's going to come up and backhand on the short hop. Strong throw over to Connor Paul for the second out. That's a do or die backhand right there by Landon Luterman. Dylan Johnson. With two outs, Dylan Johnson steps in. He's the DH. Freshman lines one down that left field line. I just went to the wrong camera. Sorry about that. It would have been out of your viewing area anyway. Juggling some balls up here, spinning some plates. Temper foul at the plate. Count one ball, two strikes now. Trigg is ahead, looking for a one, two, three inning here in the top of the second. Rocks and fires. Swing and a miss. Caden Trigg gets it done. Now four strikeouts in two innings. So he gets Dylan Johnson to swing over the top of a breaking pitch. He's got that one working. Hope his arm is feeling good. Not sure how long Sam Folks, the pitching coach and head coach Jim McGuire, will go with Caden Trigg. I'm sure he's on a pitch count of some sort. 
but he has come back strong in the second after giving up one hit, a walk, and a hit batter in inning number one. A couple strikeouts and a ground out as we head to the bottom of the second inning. Also, I'd like to thank Dudak Communications and Coca Cola for their donations in the press box. Had some alumni up in here the other day and feel proud to uh, show them up here in the press box. Got a couple of the plaques here and uh, we'll have the Alley Cassidy Brick and Stone Alumni Spotlight a little later on in this game, but pretty funny story that involves an alumni. Would love to have him up here show him press box, although I don't think he was here when this building was built. Still trying to figure out when that happened. I think it was in the late 90s with Kenny Thomas. But uh, Coca-Cola's provided a little refrigerator that's been very popular here with folks that show up. If I put waters in there, they get drank. They get drunken. They get they get drinked. Not an English major. Leading off, number five. Landon is going to lead off the bottom of the second. Luderman from Knoxville, Tennessee. Swings at the first pitch, and it's that one over to his teammates' dugout. And the dugout there did not hit any of the players standing up at the fence. Swing and a miss on a high fastball. As a matter of fact, it hit, I think, the padding on the top that was provided by line to line last year. Put padding in the railing and netting. Shot to second base. Jaron Kaiser smothers that one, picks it up, and throws Luderman out. I think, actually, that our base umpire was calling him out on the line drive. Going to have to look at that again. He did, in fact, call him out on the line out. Reggie Cooper steps in. So not a four to three. That's actually a line out to the second baseman. Cooper buckled with a little slider right there. Reggie Cooper's got a couple home runs. He and Cannon Lewis, the only Two pioneers with multiple home runs. Pops that one up out to right field. Josh Wood over, puts his hand up in that sun, and then gets the glove up and makes the catch. So two out quickly here. We move to the top of the order. Josh Wood's had some work out there already. A couple put outs and one he lost in the sun. That was Stephen Bell's fly ball out there. Logan Molnar flew out to him. It's the first batter in the bottom of the first inning. He swings at the first one. He's going to drop in there into center field in front of Wyatt Hurd. He picks it up on one hop, gets it back in. There is the single. So Ball State with four hits. And they've got them all now. Single, double, triple, and a home run. So if you have that on your bingo card, you win a prize. Come on up to the press box and claim your free bottle of water. Brady Nipper, first pitch he saw, drove it out of here to left field into the parking lot, just to the right of the sign out there. Hayden Shrum's sign. Bryant Driscoll, a little weary there as he throws over to first base. Drive Molnar back. See a couple of the pitchers, R.J. Moore and Trent Miller taking their seat behind home plate, walking through the camera view there. Beautiful afternoon. I think it's supposed to be 76. Nice slow breaking pitch there. Nepper did not like it. Might have been expecting a fastball there. 1 0. You'd never want to get fooled on the first strike. That's what I always told my son. Don't have a bad hack on the first strike. 
it was in the dirt blocked nicely by Manning, but he, he doesn't see where it is, and Molnar is going to take second. It'll be charged as a wild pitch. Nipper now with an opportunity for another RBI. Count goes three balls and a strike. Can play shortstop or second base, middle infielder. 5'10", 170 pounds. Business major, the son of Gary Nipper. He drives one down that left field line, but it will be foul. Son of Gary Nipper. And Stacy Chapman. Full count ministries, full count to Brady Knepper, K N E P P E R. Molnar leads off second with two outs, and Knepper's going to take one in the back. I think that's happened about three or four times this year. Would have been ball four, but instead it's a hit by pitch. He's going to he's going to wear that one. Number twenty-two, Stephen Bell. You hit a home run instead of being walked. I'm going to hit you. First hit batter by Bryant Driscoll. Those runners at first and second with two out, two on as they check down there at first base. Volunteer assistant coach Shane Kemp checking with Brady Nepper to see where that hit. Somewhere in his arm. I don't know if it got him an elbow. Hopefully it got him in a meaty part, maybe the tricep. It looks like it might be a little farther back than that. Maybe it's on his back, which is probably even better. Brody Melton will tell you about getting hit by a pitch in the hand. He's wearing a cast as a result of it. Stephen Bell and a fly ball double. Looks at the first pitch on the outside corner called strike. I'd like to see Steven take that ball to left field right there the next time if it comes in there on that outside pitch, drive it right over the head of shortstop Hunter Williams into the left center field gap. Wyatt Hurt, center fielder just on the right field side of center field. And he does try to drive one that way. That way will get into the bullpen. Who made the play on that? Max Castle down there makes the play on that one. Stephen Bell down in the count. No balls and two strikes. Got the ladybug infestation out. Got them flying around in front of our cameras, inside and outside the MGM Industries windows. Brian Driscoll has a sign. Checks the runner at second and delivers. Another fly ball. This is in shallow right field. In comes Josh Wood. He will make the catch. That's a late grab right there at the... Just as that ball's about to hit him in the face. And Bell is retired. And Ball State strands two. One hit. No errors. We're through two innings here. And three to nothing, Ball State leads. I'd like to also thank Summit Concrete as we'll have a Call to the bullpen at some point in time. Don't have it just yet. Caden Trigg back out on the mound. Some of concrete owned by Chuck Akers, a former player of Coach McGuire over at MTSU. And he has graciously offered and uh, contributed to the upgrade of the facilities here. Redid the bullpens in the fall of 2021. So I want to thank Chuck Akers. Quite a few former players over at MTSU have been very helpful to the Ball State baseball program here. 
Summit Concrete is a leading concrete contractor. They established in 2015. They serve the greater metro Nashville area. You can go to Summit with two M's and one T, ConcreteTN.com. Let them know you appreciate their support of Vol State Baseball. Back to the top of the lineup, Hunter Williams, the shortstop, steps in. Grounded out to his counterpart, Logan Molnar, in the first swings and misses on the first offering from Caden Trigg in his third inning of work. Does not get the swing on that breaking pitch. Hunter Williams, Josh Wood, Gaines Hassin do up for Cumberland. Three straight breaking balls. That one fouled off. Another foul ball straight back. Fastball is foul tipped at the plate. Christian squeezing his glove together, saying I should have held that one. Count remains two balls and two strikes. Ileana J.C. Menendez's mother is watching down in Miami. Good luck from the 305, she says. Popped up in the infield. Let's see if Caden Trigg's going to take that one. He's an athlete. He can make the catch, and he does. Coach McGuire tells these pitchers, hey, it's your out. Go get it. That's what Trigg did. Joshua Wood, the right fielder, steps in. And he's going to take one in the legs. Second hit batter by Trigg. Wood had the opposite field double in the first, but was stranded at third. Stepping to the plate, number one, Gaines Austin. Thanks for the email, Ileana. Hoping that JC gets better real soon. Swing and a miss by Hassin. He struck out in the first inning. Deborah Paul's watching from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And Carmen and Jude also watching. Breaking pitch had Hassin dropping his hands to get out of the way. And instead, it's a called strike on the inside corner. It's Triggs ahead. He's looking for that ground ball to a middle infielder for the dude that double play. Wood leads off a of first as Hassin thinks that he held up. They're going to check out with the base umpire. He says he did not go. Pardon my voice today, folks. I broadcasted three games yesterday and getting a little froggy here. Way outside. Nice play by Dunn to keep that one from the backstop. Lady Pioneers playing another doubleheader today. Sure, it is on all states. Sports Network as well. I've seen is to do the dance to get out of the way. Well, full count ministries, full count. All four. Got him in trouble in inning number one. He had, a, had it in reverse that time. He had a walk and then a hit batter. Here he's got a hit batter and then a walk. So with one out, he has provided two free passes to the Cumberland JV squad, and that brings up Caden Birch, who drew the first walk. But one pitch, he can get out of it. There's a breaking pitch for a called strike. Does not look like the softball game with Motlow State is being 
broadcast on the Vol State Sports Network. So apparently the other broadcasters couldn't get up there for today's game. Got a doubleheader in conference play against the Lady Bucks. Popped up and out of play. That's an MGM Industries foul ball. Count goes one ball, two strikes. There we go. We got some Phoenix fans that are checking in on the broadcast. Karen Birch. There's a ground ball back to Trigg. He's got confused there. He's throwing over to first base. He was thinking about third and ended up deciding just to get the one out. His play probably was to go to Molnar at second, see if he can get him a 1-6-3 double play, but looked at third base first. Number 18. But big news there is that he got an out. Take the sure out. Now Ben Sills steps to the plate. Strike call to Sills. I'm reading this email and it says Karen Birch dash freshman hometown of Conroe, Texas. Family, I do remember you from the uh, fall. That's right. Y'all sent an e email in the fall as he swings and misses at the breaking pitch down in the count 0 2. Move from Conroe or move from Birmingham to Conroe. Played high school baseball at Bessemer Academy in Bessemer, Alabama. 6 4 2 10. Caden, not Karen. Okay. <laughs> Chris Birch's father. You you emailed me back in the fall. I remember that now. Chris with a C, no H. Yeah, Caden doesn't appreciate that typo. He doesn't want to be known as a Karen. I hate that for all the good Karens out there. Oh, two pitch. Oh my goodness. I'm waiting for him to raise that right hand just even on the call. But Sills was able to check his swing. And Daniel Rios, not ready to ring up Sills with runners at second and third. Two outs. Cade Trigg trying to wiggle off again. Fouled off to the right side. He'll get into the trees. Into that park-like area over there. Little guys come out of the Vol State dugout to go Easter egg hunting for baseball. One two pitch. Ground ball to the left side. That's going to get into the glove of Logan Molnar, but that's going to be an infield single and an RBI. Molnar had nowhere to go with that. Landon Luterman had gone to his left and so was not at. The bag that puts runners at first and third and a run in. And Coach McGuire out to take the baseball from Caden Trigg. Those must have been all the pitches that he's allowed to throw today. So he gives up at this point one run. That's an infield single. That's only the second hit off of Caden Trigg. Two walks, two hit batters, four strikeouts. So we'll take a quick break, tell you about the new pitcher we return on the Ball State Sports Network.
So a concrete call to the bullpen for the Pioneers. Jack McLaurie, 6'1", 155-pound freshman right-hander from Las Casas, Tennessee. Went to Independence High School. Played for his father over there, Mike McLaurie. Mother Ashley. They're from Las Casas. He also has a brother, Judd. He is on with... First and third, two outs, and he jams the fire out of Wyatt Hurd, who fouls that one off his knuckles. His grandparents in Iowa, Grandpa Mahoney and Grandma Deb, and a Mimi in Murfreesboro. Runner goes, pitches a strike, throw down to second base, off the glove of Logan Molnar, and it will go into center field, and a run's going to score. That will go down as an error. Question is, is the error on the throw or is the error on the catch? So a stolen base for Ben Sills. The count is two strikes as Hurt fouls that one off. First error of the game for either team. Glory, sidearm delivery, breaking pitch outside. I am not the official scorer, folks, so my opinion doesn't really matter as McGlory gets a swinging strike three to retire Hurt. We're out number three. Not before the Phoenix score two runs. One is unearned. On one hit, one, hit, one error, one runner left on base. Three to two, Vol State leads. Scheduled for seven innings here at Pioneer Field at Volunteer State Community College. We'll be right back on the Vol State Sports Network. Cannon Lewis leads off the bottom of the third inning. Bryant Driscoll still on the mound, drive into left field on the first pitch that Lewis sees for a base hit. Good start for the Pioneers. Now batting, number 32, Connor, Connor Paul will step in. He walked in the first inning. It's the fifth hit of the game for the Pioneers. A couple singles, double, triple, and a home run. Brady Nipper rode one out of here. In the first inning, Connor Paul looks at a called strike. All right, ma'am, what's he going to do? Ma'am in Tulsa. Throw 
throw to first base. Cannon Lewis, the speedster, is back. No stolen base attempts, but they are worried about him over there at first base. Shane Kemp holding his equipment over there and throwing in some sunflower seeds. He's nonplussed about what's happening here. Paul set to receive, and he smokes one down the first baseline, but it will go foul. On deck, Gage Hoover. Came very close to hitting another home run in the first inning. Hit one out just to the right of the center field batter's eye. Breaking pitch misses outside. The Rune State Series, I understand, has been moved to Saturday and Sunday down in Harriman due to impending bad weather on Friday. So I would assume the doubleheader would be on Saturday and the single game on Sunday. And Connor Paul goes the opposite way into left field. Back-to-back -back hits brought to you by Hit After Hit. Lem Pilkington over at Hit After Hit. Number 16, Gage. Good friend of Coach McGuire. He's the, he provides sporting goods and help with gloves and bats. Appreciate Lim Pilkington over at Hit After Hit. So there's two base hits in the left field here to begin the third inning. Gage Hoover steps in and he swings at the first pitch he sees. It will roll between Coach McGuire and the third base bag. Gage, six foot, 200 pound freshman from Stewart's Creek High School, hometown in Smyrna, Tennessee, the son of Mike and Angie Hoover, brother to Michael, Pap Pap and Grandma Homer, and Pap Pap and Grandma Hopper. Both sets of grandparents in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. Mike Hoover with the accurate mortgage sign out there in left center field. Gage might like to visit that sign that's just under the Toyota of Gallatin scoreboard. Swings and misses on that changeup. Looking for his first collegiate home run. Strong young man, 2023 Mr. Baseball award winner. The Stewart's Creek High School Male Athlete of the Year last year. Fouls that one down that right field line. That'll get over the Bobby Hudson Pavilion onto the maintenance shed and over into the trees. I haven't gotten down that far to clean out the underbrush yet. Had a little malfunction with my wood chipper and then a little thing called the beginning of the season baseball. Tapper on the right side. Bryant Driscoll will underhand to Caden Birch from Conroe, Texas for the first down of the inning. It's like a swing and bunt for Gage Hoover. The problem is he gets charged as an at-bat, not a sacrifice bunt. Cannon Lewis ends up over on third base. And out of the dugout comes Drew Lowe, coach for the Cumberland Phoenix Junior Varsity Squad. He's a grad assistant under Ryan Hunt. He'll come out and chat with his infield before Christian Dunn steps to the plate. Dunn flew out to center field to end the first. He's six foot, 195 pounds, sophomore. Hometown of Collierville, Tennessee, just outside of Memphis. Originally went to Blinn. Junior college down in Texas and then transferred to Dyersburg State last fall. Parents Cordell and Baisha Dunn. Siblings Shannon, Shalina. I think he told me. You know, he told me. It's Naya or Nia. I think it's Naya. 
Now, buddy. Number two. CJ, Colin, and Bailey. Somebody's listening in on the Dunn family. Want to send an email to tresports at gmail.com. While I have my piece of paper in front of me, you can let me know. N-I-A. Naya or Nia? Change up, Mrs. Down. Ball misses up. Christian Dunn and Connor Paul lead the team in RBIs with eight. Christian would like to break that tie right here. He stopped by Luke Manning on a ball in the dirt. 3 0 count to Christian Dunn. Let's see if he's got the green light. Coach McGuire goes through the signs down to third base. Dunn has. What Coach McGuire wants chokes up about a half an inch on that knob. I'm going to say he's got the green light. Well, if he did, we'll never know. That's ball four. And the bases are now loaded for Landon Luterman. Second walk of the ball game by Bryant Driscoll. As they're just now starting to be some activity in the Phoenix bullpen down the right field line. Another change up down low. Does not appear as though Driscoll wants to challenge Landon Luterman here. Landon Luterman can lose a baseball pretty quick. Lost one down in Millington a couple weeks ago. With the right center field fence down there. A little bit of a wind <laughs> heading down that way, but swinging a miss on a fastball high and outside. Whoops, not a ball. 2 1 is the count. Going to go away again on. Land and they're going to call that a strike. Two strikes now. Land is going to have to play defense in that batter's box. The son of Daniel and Shannon Luterman from Knoxville Catholic High School. Another nice stop by Luke Manning on a ball in the dirt. We'll have a full count ministries full count. Thanks to Josh Carmen and Reed Glover, Brooke Carmen over at the Full Count Ministries for allowing me to broadcast yesterday high school ball game between Hersville Commandos and the Liberty Creek Wolves, two Sumner County teams. Ground ball to second. Over to short. At, they'll get one. Lane Luderman will pick up an RBI on the fielder's choice. Pioneers Number 10, pick up a run. It's Cannon Lewis, who singled to start the inning, comes in to score. Connor Paul moves over to third. Christian Dunn erased on the fielder's choice for out number two. Reggie Cooper stands in. Runners at the corners, brought to you by line to line. Cooper flew out to right field in the second inning. Doubleheader action today at, here at Vol State. Then we will go on the road, throw over to first base. Luderman back. Caught a balk. Not sure what happened there, but that scores another run. And Reggie Cooper. Now it's one less run to drive in. Ground ball to short. Hunter Williams bobbles it. And 
Reggie Cooper's going to reach on the E6. We're going to have runners at the corners again. Brought to you by line to line. They were the grounds crew along with Game Time Sports Fields. That whole group of folks line to line specifically provided that netting and panting in front of the dugouts and surrounding the bullpens. Runner goes as Molnar swings and misses. Let's get the count right up on our scoreboard. One ball, one strike. Ground ball to the left side. Gains Hassin gloves and throws Molnar out at first base for out number three. Pioneers put two more on the board. Two leadoff hits by Cannon Lewis and Connor Paul. Was one error. And two runners left on base. We are through three. All state leads five. To two, you're listening to the Vol State Sports Network. Number four, Luke Manning. Moved to the top of the fourth inning, Luke Manning, Jaron Kaiser, and Dylan Johnson. Bottom three set to come to the plate. Pop up into shallow center field. Reggie Cooper over. He's going to make the one-handed grab for the first out. Luke Manning's now 0 for 2. Stepping to the plate, number two, Jaron, Jaron Kaiser. Kaiser. Rounded out to third. In the one, two, three inning, Caden Trigg retired the side. Jack McLaurie, the second pitcher for the Pioneers, delivers a ball outside. Trigg goes two and two thirds innings. Gives up two hits, two runs, only one was earned. Two walks, four strikeouts, two hit batters. These are unofficial statistics. Check your box score tomorrow or maybe later on tonight to see if I'm correct. 3-0 pitch, misses inside. It's a four-pitch walk to Kaiser. Now batting, number 37, Dylan Johnson. Now Dylan Johnson, DH, he struck out to end the second inning. Steps to the plate. Tried to look at Game Changer to see if I could find out a score for the softball game between the Lady Pioneers and the Lady Bucks across the campus. But for some reason, I can't pull that up, but strike called. 
Christian Lynn looking for another sweep, stay undefeated in the TWCAA. Leading the conference with an 8-0 record after the first two weeks. They've swept Jackson State. In Southwest Tennessee in back-to-back -back weeks. Just a two-game series with Motlow State, and then they will travel along with the men this weekend to take on Roan State. 2-2 two -two pitch. Going to have to wait after McLaurie drives Kaiser back to first base. Couple looks to first. Another foul ball on the left side. One out. Glory looking for a ground ball. He will get it, but it will get on through into center field for a single. Hit just a little bit softer, and that would have been a 6-3 double play. But instead, it scoots on through for a base hit. That's the third hit of the ball game for Cumberland JV. Putting runners at first and second. And the top of the lineup, Hunter Williams is over two steps in. Ground out and a pop out to the pitcher. Ryan Hunt, the head coach of the varsity squad for Cumberland Phoenix. He is in the dugout. They had an 11 to nothing victory over Milligan yesterday. Pat Bell is an assistant coach at the program, so is Matt Risco. And Drew Lowe, who handles the JV squad, is a grad assistant. Sidearm delivery fouled off to the right side. Fifteen and eight overall is Cumberland. That's the varsity. Sidearm sweeper. Outside, count goes two balls and two strikes to the leadoff batter, Hunter Williams. Josh Wood stands on deck. Swing and a miss and a high fastball. And Williams goes down, swinging for out number two. Second strike out of the ball game for Jack McLaurie. Josh Wood doubled in the first, was hit by a pitch, and scored the first run of the game for Cumberland in the third. Former right-hander for Vol State, Dylan Bland, former players. That ball hops into right field. Stephen Bell has it. The throw to the plate is not going to be in time. An RBI single for Josh Wood, who's now two for two. Seeing eye base hit just over the glove of Connor Paul. Number one, Gaines Hossin. <laughs> Gaines Hossin steps to the plate, struck out and walked. Two hits in the inning. Swing and a miss. Five 
five to three Vol State now leads. MGM Industries, foul ball off to the right side. They're located in Hendersonville on Free Hill Road. Actually make custom windows, step off, throw to second base. Logan Molnar now has runner at third, but they're not going to get him. It's going to be a stolen base. Runners at second and third as Dylan Johnson was able to get back to third. I think Molnar gave that one up a little bit too soon. Count remains no balls and two strikes. Now runners at second and third with two out. Laurie's trying to step on one there, but he yanked it a little bit too far outside. One ball, two strikes. Caden Birch on deck. Sidearm fastball fouled off. I seen did a good job staying in there on that sidearm delivery. McGlory will stay about three quarters. And every once in a while, drop down with a fastball or a breaking pitch. One, two. Hitting started with a fly out, then a walk. Single up the middle by Dylan Johnson. A strikeout and a single in the right field by Josh Wood. Stolen base. Uh, where we are, and this game's fixing to be tied as a single by Haasin into center field, drives in two. We are all knotted at five. Now batting number 32, Caden Burke. So the failed first and third situation there, although the runner stepped off of third or went early. McLaurie did a good job of stepping off and throwing to second base. The runner got into a rundown and the runner at third started to head home. Molnar threw home instead of running at the runner to make him commit. Dylan Johnson was able to get back to third. Then runners were at second and third when Haasin drives one into left center field or center field. Slow roller to the third base side. That's going to be an infield single. Everything going right for the Cumberland JV here in the fourth. Stepping to the plate, number 18, Ben Seals. Puts runners at first and second. Three straight hits. Just eluded Jack McGlory's glove. Then Sills, who had an infield single in the third, nearly got hit with that fastball. There was some arm side movement to that one. One ball, one strike. The eighth batter to come to the plate here in the fourth. Gloria looking to shut it down. Gets a swing and a miss on a sweeper. Sills was hit by a pitch in the first. Infield single on a stolen base in the third, but was stranded at third base. One, two pitch. Sidearm sweeper catches that outside corner for a called strike three. Sills goes down looking. Third strike out of the ball game for McLaurie, but Cumberland sends eight to the plate. 
Three runs scored on four hits. No errors. Two runners left on base. All tied up as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Might have a new pitcher coming out. See if we can figure out who it is. Tell you about him when we return on the Ball State Sports Network. Tim Reese back on the Ball State Sports Network. We move to the bottom of the fourth inning. Have a new pitcher in for the Cumberland JV squad, Grant Charlton. Former teammate of Braxton Alexander. What Travel ball, what was the name of the team, Braxton? Blueprint. You guys a bunch of architects or something? We got music playing while the uh, baseball game is going on for some reason. Brady Nepper. <laughs> Foul bunt. You ask Braxton a question, takes concentration <laughs> away from what he's supposed to be doing. <laughs> B.A., it's okay. All right, relax. Hey, look, pitcher needs a baseball. <laughs> it's all falling apart here. It's all Braxton's fault. <laughs> Nipper it. Takes a home run cut right there. Comes up empty. Road one out of here into the parking lot. His first home run of the year was hit by a pitch. I think that was a 3-2 count, as a matter of fact. We don't call it 3-2. We call that full count. And I thought maybe that hit went, hit him in the foot. But instead, I think it hit our catcher, Luke Manning, in the foot as our home plate umpire, Daniel Rios, will deliver that baseball to Grant Charlton personally. Braxton, can I ask you another question? Where did Grant Charlton go to high school? Uh, Smyrna. Smyrna High School? He's a bulldog? You heard it here. Braxton Alexander, our DJ and PA man. Former teammate with Grant Charlton. Breaking pitch misses down. Crack research staff up here in the press box. I think I remember him in the fall. Swing and a miss on a tailing fastball. And Nepper down for the first time today. Former Cumberland JV squad member himself, Brady Nepper. Brian Driscoll goes three innings, gives up six hits, five runs. Two walks, a strikeout, and a hit batter. Stephen Bell doubled off of Brant Driscoll, but also flew out to right field, one for two in the ball game. Now looking a lefty versus lefty. Uh, Jack and Clary and Big Trigg were also in trouble. Are you kidding me? Wow, some more information that you will want to know. 
Caden Trigg and Jack McLory were also on that blueprint baseball team. Where where is the blueprint team out of I mean they're out of Murfreesboro. Wow, what a small world. And here you are up here announcing their names. Strike call on the inside corner. If you're not aware, Braxton is a medical red shirt this year. He had surgery last fall. Was that when you had it? August? August 17th. August. 2 1 pitch to Bell, a little bit high. Stevens, 6'3, 180 pound sophomore transfer from Alderson Broadus, D2 school in West Virginia. The Battlers. Strike called. Don't know that that's a pitch you can hit right there. If you're going to get that call, you can pitch a long time. Full count. Ministries full count to the son of Frank and Katie Bell, twin brother to Mark. Strike three called. That was better looking than the previous one, and down goes Bell looking. Back-to-back -back strikeouts by Grant Driscoll. Up steps the DH, Cannon Lewis. Son of Ryan and Daphne Lewis. Got a base hit in his last plate appearance and scored. Brother to J.C. and Mason. Grandson of Grandpa and Grandma and Papa and Granny, all of Hendersonville, Tennessee. It's a local product from Beach High School right down the road. Went a couple of years to Roan State Community College. Got in 32 games a year ago, 70 official at-bats, and a couple doubles and a home run. He eclipsed that home run mark with two home runs back-to-back -back in the Motlow State Series a couple weeks back. High chopper down to third. Gaines Hasin has it. And throw over to Birch to retire the side. One, two, three for Grant Charlton. We are through four, all tied up, five to five. See if we got a new pitcher when we come back on the Ball State Sports Network. Anderson. Summit Concrete call to the bullpen for the Pioneers. Cooper Anderson, six foot, 175 pound freshman right hander out of Ravenwood High School, Franklin, Tennessee, the son of David Anderson and Christina Sargent, on in relief of Jack McLaurie. Cooper you know, for the third appearance this year. One and two thirds innings, giving up only one hit, one strikeout. Had a little trouble with the base on balls this year. Hoping to get that corrected. He's the brother of Callan and Alyssa. Wyatt Hurst. 
and Ryan and Neil. Hello, hello to Grandpa Art and Papa and Nana and Grandma. Might be listening in on the Ball State Sports Network today. First pitch he delivers to Wyatt Hurts in there for a called strike. McClory goes an inning and a third. Gives up four hits, three runs that were earned. Walked one, struck out three. Gives away to Cooper Anderson. He gets the first two strikes on Wyatt Hurt, who has seen plenty of those. Struck out twice in his first two bats. At bats now make it the hat trick. Now adding number four, Luke Manning. Luke Manning, the catcher, steps in. He's 0 for 2. Catches the outside corner with a fastball there. Hoover in left, Cooper in center, Bell in right. Swing and a miss. Luderman, Molnar on the left side, Nepper and Paul on the right side. Christian Dunn catching his third pioneer pitcher of the day. Anderson might be asked to go the rest of the way. It is served out to right field. Stephen Bell will move over into right center field a little bit, make the catch for out number two. Manning now 0 for 3. Number two, Jaron, Jaron Kaiser 0 for 1 with a walk and a run scored. He's playing second base today for the JV squad. Cooper Anderson pumping some strikes in here in his first inning of work. That's exactly what Sam Folks, the first year pitching coach, and head coach Jim McGuire want to see. Make him hit it. Way too many walks this past weekend against Chattanooga State. Right around about 37 walks and about four hit batters. May have been more than that hit batters wise, but it was about a dozen a game. It's Pioneers. Yeah, you see the ladybug right there. <laughs> Strike three called. That's a good luck ladybug apparently to Cooper Anderson. As he gets a one, two, three inning, striking out two. We get the Pioneer batters back in the dugout where they belong. Ball State try to take the lead here in the bottom of the fifth after putting up a zero. After giving up two in the third and three in the fourth to Cumberland. We're all tied up. We'll be right back on the Ball State Sports Network. Now batting, number 32. Connor Paul leading off for the Pioneers. As it looks like we're giving things away up here in the press boxes. All state players, standing room only. 
Getting a little warm out there, Brody? It is. It is, especially on my neck. It's Nobody like, wants to be a redneck, do they? Especially if you're from Tullahoma. I mean, that thriving metropolis down there in still considered Middle Tennessee, isn't it? It is. It is. Tullahoma, Tennessee. It's a wild cat. 3 0 count to Connor Paul from Grant Charlton. Wildcats took down the Mount Julie Bears last night. Grant Charlton has not allowed a base runner yet. Till now. Four pitch walk to Connor Paul. It's his second walk of the game. Been on base all three times he's been to the plate. Hit a single in the third. He scored two Gage runs. Hoover. Gage Hoover will step to the plate. Had a triple in the first inning and grounded out. Moving runners over to second and third in the third inning. Wild pitch on the throw in from Grant Charlton. Parker White also getting in out of the sun up here in the press box. Swing and a miss. Gage Hoover looking to go up by two with that mighty stroke. Now the wasps are starting to show up. Charlton is the second pitcher for the Phoenix today. We have an almost identical line out there on the scoreboard. At least as far right is concerned, that ball gets by Luke Manning. Paul will move down to second base on the wild pitch. Let's see if my line agrees with Brody Milton's line. It does. Five runs, six hits, and one error for each side. Charlton looks back at Paul and delivers high and away. Hoover's going to draw another base on balls, and this will elicit a trip to the mound by Drew Lowe. Back-to-back -back walks by Charlton. Somebody just now picking up the javelin down there in the uh, bullpen. What do you call that big long stick, Braxton? Okay, Parker's going to answer the question for you, Braxton. Well, shoulder tube. Looks like a piece of PVC or something down there. They've got all manner of workout equipment down there. We've got balls we throw off the wall. We've got stretchy bands. Probably got one of those little gun things that you, you hit. What do you call that? A little massage armor? A Theragun massager. Pitchers, they're a delicate breed. Isn't that right, Brody Melton? You say so, Mr. Braxton Alexander, Parker White, a couple left-handers up here in the press box. They keep it exciting. Christian Dunn, fastball, chin high, ball one. I pitched one game in my life, an 11-1 to one victory. Threw one curveball. That hit the guy in the middle of the back. That was the last curveball I threw. Five-inning run rule in Babe Ruth baseball as a 15-year-old. Popped up to the right side. It will get out of play right over the light standard. Count goes one ball, one strike. 15-year-old team in Cincinnati, Ohio. I think we were called Gilkey Electric then. About 1975. <laughs> Actually had leather over the top of the uh, the yarn that's inside a baseball. Not sure how many stitches that baseball had, but 
See if Brody Melton knows. How many stitches in a baseball? Once again, Parker White answering questions not addressed to him. <laughs> Showing off his level of knowledge. This man is, there's not a question he doesn't want to answer. But Brody did not know the answer. Let's see if anybody out in YouTube land wants to try to answer that one. I'm sure they didn't hear Parker give the correct answer. How many stitches on a baseball? Full count ministries, full count to Christian Dunn. He fouls that one back to the netting. Full count, first pitch, foul ball. I guess I didn't have my full count up there. Is it not full count? No, he did. Oh. He did this right here. I don't oh, okay. So I was not. I was looking at the, our scoreboard. Brody's messing me up. Fisted to second base. That'll be an out. So we'll just not have a full count ministries. Full count. Number five, Landon Luderman. Looking at the big Toyota of Gallatin scoreboard out there. And apparently the focus issue is uh, a problem up here in the press box. If I ask a question to these guys, it messes them up on their job. I'm going to have to t quit doing that. Guys, you got to focus better, okay? Two on, one out. Landon Luderman with the bright orange bat. Looks like called strike one. Braxton, you can't quit. We just gotta, we just gotta get better. I mean, we just gotta get better. That's what we gotta do. Okay, we're just looking for a little more production out of you. You can do it. Oh one, high and outside. Grant Charlton has to get up on his high horse there. Throw back from Luke Manning. I don't see my. If it's a job worth doing BA, it's a job worth doing well. Luderman with a high fly ball out to right center field. Wyatt Hurt over. He's going to make the catch. Tagging on the play is Connor Paul. He'll move up to third. Luderman just missed that one. Now batting number 10, Reggie Cooper. Number nine hitter Reggie Cooper steps to the plate. Braxton Alexander says he's a volunteer. You're a pioneer, okay? That's what you are. If you want to go to UT Knoxville, then you can be a volunteer. Right now, you're a blaze. You're a trailblazer. You're a pioneer. Runners at the corner is brought to you by line to line. It's Cooper has to hold up on that high fastball. Charlton and a couple looks over at first base and the delivery. Called strike. The lead call there. It's been a long week. <laughs> Runner goes, pitches outside. They're going to let him take the base. Uncontested stolen base for Gage Hoover. Stolen base nonetheless. His first of his collegiate career, according to the NJCAA stats. Breaking pitch gets in there for a called strike. Reggie Cooper with two ducks out on the pond. Two ball, two strike count. Derek Henry is here. Oh, no, that's a little kid wearing his jersey, his old Titans jersey. 2-2 two -two pitch, driven out to right field. Josh Wood back. He's going to make the catch for the third out. Cumberland Phoenix get out of the jam. 
No runs, no hits, no errors. Two runners left on. The leadoff walks do not come back to bite Grant Charlton. We are still tied as we head to the sixth. Let's see who else. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll get to our Alley Cassidy Brick and Stone alumni spotlight. And an unusual occurrence as I come out of my house to head to the ballpark today, and I see my new neighbor just purchased the house next door. Go over to meet him, and I enter, get introduced to his contractor, a guy named Billy Bird, who sees the shirt I'm wearing of All State Athletics Association polo, and he says, you have anything to do with All State? And I tell him what I do. And he said, I was an All-American in 1991 over there, Billy Bird Jr. And I said, well, Billy Bird, you know what you need? You need a brick in the alumni brick patio because you don't have one. And he said, I don't know anything about it. I told him about it. Brody Milton, the man, handed me five $20 bills and said, get me a brick. That's and awesome. pulled it right on out of his wallet. He owns home site contractors. I asked him where he went after he was an All-American for Kenny Thomas here at Vol State. And he said, I went and got married and started a contracting business. Home site contractors. That's what he did. So, Billy Bird, we're going to get you a, a brick paver in our alumni patio that's just inside the fence here at Pioneer Field at the Tim Garrett Baseball Complex. Billy Bird, B-Y-R-D. Going to have to look him up, talk to uh, Kenny Thomas, myself probably. Said he played with uh, Jody Zimmerly, wow. the good snake. Jody Zimmerly, father to Zach Zimmerly, current player, redshirt freshman here for the Pioneers. So I'll have to talk to Jody and maybe get a little intel. I mean, this man right here is a barrel-chested, lift a Buick type of a guy. Strong personality, you could tell. And I'd like to get him hooked back up with the alumni here at Vol State, but... That's how God works. You wear a, a shirt with Vol State on it, and who knows who you might meet. Says he knows Johnny Lynn, the head men's basketball coach here at Vol State. We want to thank Alec Cassidy, Brick and Stone, my buddy Randy West, one of the owners of Alec Cassidy, Brick and Stone. Also, Keith Green, the division manager here at the Gallatin location. One of these days, I'm going to meet Richard Waltz, the division manager in Clarksville, who is the father of one of the players here, old Carter Waltz. Still hadn't got into a game. How far away is he from getting out on that mound? Anybody got an idea? Probably a couple innings. You think he might, uh, he might be on the hill today? He is scheduled to uh, get into the game. I haven't seen him throw. He didn't throw in the fall. Ground ball to the right side. Connor Paul has it. He'll take it himself for the first out. Now batting number 45, Hunter Williams. That was Dylan Johnson, who's now one for three. A single and scored in the fourth. Hunter Williams 0 for 3 looking for his first hit of the game. It's a called strike. Cooper Anderson in his second inning of work retired. Four batters that he's faced. Ali Cassidy brick and stone donated a pallet of brick pavers for our alumni patio and as we get new alumni bricks, we'll take out the blank brick paver and put in one that has the player's name, the years he played, and what positions he played. Fastball high and inside. Again, it goes three balls and one strike to the Phoenix shortstop. Ali Cassidy Brick and Stone since 1879. That's a long time. That's even before I was around. They have locations in Tennessee, Georgia, Kentucky, and Alabama, including right here in Gallatin and up in Clarksville. Richard Waltz runs the Clarksville 
location. So a one-out walk puts a runner at first. Josh Wood, who's not been retired all day long, double hit by pitch and a single wraps one down just past the visitor's dugout. Stephen Bell started to go after that one, but right fielder will go back to his spot. Somebody out of the bullpen will retrieve that baseball. Throw over to first. Williams is back. Haven't had a doodad double play yet today. Let's see if Cooper Anderson can get Josh Wood to ground into. He will not. Drives one down that right field line. It is just foul. This young man can swing the stick. Anybody's out there that knows Josh Wood, let me know where he's from. Again, I don't have that information on their website. Counts 0-2. And an opposite field double in the first in the left center field. Hit by a pitch, and there's a breaking pitch. Stolen base, no throw. I don't think Christian Dunn saw him going very quickly, but I think there was a chance to get Williams there. Off the end of the bat, foul. Count remains one ball and two strikes. Josh Wood, as a matter of fact, must be a late add to the JV roster. He's not even showing online. Change up, swing and a miss. Guess that's that change up, or you think that's that splitter? I thought that splitter came in there a little bit harder than that. I know he's got some funky spin on that splitter, but now batting number one, James Austin. He gets a swing and a miss. It's the third strikeout for Cooper Anderson. Gaines Hasin steps in. He's one for two. Head out. Two runs single in the fourth. Tie the ball game. Now two outs and a runner at second. Williams getting getting off a little farther. Nineteen players on the JV roster that I was handed before the game. Down now goes two balls and no strikes. On deck, Caden Birch. I'm gonna throw to Brady Neppers. Standing at his second base, that's going to be one, one ball. Oh, that's the second disengagement. So ball three on the batter. It doesn't count as a step off and throw to the base if the fielder is not standing on or near the base, apparently. And Cooper already had one disengagement for this batter, so he's charged with a ball. Comes back with a strike on the outside corner at the letters. So that's what the umpire was doing when he turned around. Actually pointed to his watch like it the like it was a time issue. I don't swing and a miss. We'll have a full count ministry. Full count, I believe. Dave Eatman coming in with an answer I've never heard before. Swing and a miss. Cooper Anderson getting getting hyped. I mean, man is looking for some time on the mound. 
Stoked with his four strikeout. No runs, no hits, no errors. One runner left on base. This game remains tied as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Love to see the enthusiasm from the freshman, Cooper Anderson. We'll take a break. Be right back on the Ball State Sports Network. Number one, Logan Molnar. Logan Molnar leads off for the Pioneers. He's got a single and three trips to the plate. Facing Grant Charlton out for his third inning of work in relief of Bryant Driscoll. Fastball misses away. Former teammate of Braxton Alexander, our public address announcer and DJ. And the line drive back up the middle. That'll get in for a base hit. Molnar now two for four. 13 hits for the season. Brady Nepper. Now batting. Number three, Brady Nepper. One for two. Big fly in the first inning. Hit by a pitch and a strikeout. Dave Eatman with the answer of 108 stitches. Now, Dave, I have not heard 108 single and 216 doubles. Brady Nepper squares the bunt to throw down to second base as Molnar is on the go. He's going to pick up a stolen base. Pitch is a ball. First stolen base of the game for Molnar. That is his fourth in as many tries on the year. Now Nepper with an opportunity to drive him in as he is in scoring position. Dave Eatman, the father of Noah Eatman down in the Tampa area with the email. Nepper's going to square around again. That ball's in the dirt. It's going to handle whatever Brady Nepper was going to try to do. And that was move Molnar to third. Second wild pitch for Grant Charlton in the game. If other baseballs, certain baseballs are double stitched. <laughs> I guess they played with each other in the fall, right? Surely Grant Charlton and Brady Nepper were both on the team. It's the second time that Nepper's worn one. Time that Grant Charlton has hit somebody, and looks like that's going to end the afternoon for Grant Charlton. We might see what we're going to have as Drew Lowe is out to do some finagling here. Number 25 has just shown up out of the dugout. That's Ethan Baird. I wonder if he's going to go to a a position and one of the infielders is going to come into pitch. Drew Lowe is pulling out lots. Who's going to draw the short straw? Jaron Kaiser, second baseman, is going to get on the hill. So we'll have a pitching change. Jaron Kaiser coming. At a second base, get on the hill. We'll figure out where Ethan Baird ends up. As 
he going to go to second base? Looks like he is just going to swap with Jaron Kaiser. So Charlton goes two plus innings of work. Gives up only one hit, has not given up a run at this point. Has walked two, struck out two, and hit a batter. So Ethan Baird should be replacing, I think, the DH. I think that's how that works. Those guys are staying in the game. So 25. Ethan Baird moves to second base here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Stephen Bell will be the first batter to face the new pitcher. Runners at the corners brought to you by Line to Line. Lead our Stephen Dotson, Bill Marbot over at Game Time Sports Fields. They provide infield dirt and leveling. We're the grounds crew for the Region 7 TCC AA tournament. Stephen Bell in the first pitch he sees from Kaiser drives in a run with a base hit into right field. To break the tie. But Vol stayed up six to five. Bell now is two for four. Molnar, who led off the inning with a single, comes in to score after stealing second, moving to third on a wild pitch. And he comes in to score on Stephen Bell's single. Timeout call by Cannon Lewis. It's a pretty bat he's got there. Nice little light blue. Just like your cast, Brody Melton. And he's going to get plunked in the back. Cannon might have just taken the lead on hit by pitches for the team. Now batting, number 32, Connor Paul. That is hit by pitch number five. Let's see how many Nipper has. He had two coming in. Yeah, there was a three-way tie between Nepper, Logan Molnar, and Cannon Lewis. Cannon Lewis just broke that one. Connor Paul had a opposite field singles last at bat. Looks at a called strike. Like I said, he had a opposite field single two bats ago. He walked his last time. Outside, Quona for strike two. He walked and scored, singled and scored and walked and was stranded at third in the fifth inning. Looking to drive in some runs with the bases juiced. Pass ball misses high and away. So he is one for one. Looking for his 10th hit of the year. Will not get it. He'll swing and miss. Go down on strikes. Up to bat, number 16, Gage Hoover. That's the first out of the inning. Gage Hoover's got a chance to drive in some runs. Why did that not work? 1-0 pitch to Hoover. 
Steps out of the way of the breaking pitch. Gage has four RBIs for the year. Now five with the one in the first inning. Foul tips that one into the glove. He could pick up a whole bunch right here. With a big fly, let's see if he gets a pitch he can handle. 2-1 pitch coming from Kaiser. Mike Hoover sitting in his accurate mortgage office in Smyrna, Tennessee right now watching. I'm just guessing, have no idea. Foul tipped. Kicked up some dust there in the left-handed batter's box. Count goes full. Full count ministries, full count. Mimi has sent in a great verse for our Full Count Ministries verse of the game. Swing and a miss. Kaiser has struck out two here with the bases loaded. Now, buddy. Trying to get out of the inning. He's got to go through Christian Dunn to do it. Swing and a miss. Breaking pitch stays inside. Cal now goes two balls and a strike. Dunn is fly out to center field, a walk and a pop out. He is looking to get on the board with a base hit. And just missed the, with that one. Three balls and a strike. Lane and Luterman on deck, hoping to get an at bat here in the sixth inning. Swing and a miss. Dunn way out in front of that one. The full count ministries, full count. The runners will be on the move with two outs. Brady Nipper down a third. Stephen Bell at second. And Cannon Lewis will get on the hop as Jaron Kaiser going to go from the windup. Swing and a miss. And Kaiser comes in and strikes out the side after giving up a base hit and a hit batter to limit the damage. Three straight strikeouts. Pioneers take the lead with one run, two hits, no errors, three runners left on base. Go to the seventh final inning. See if Ball State can get three outs and get their sixth win of the year. Take a break. Be right back on the Ball State Sports Network.
Summit Concrete call to the bullpen for the Pioneers. Caden Johnson in for the save. 6'3", 200-pound Richard sophomore from Huntsville, Alabama. From Sparkman High School. The son of Joe and Shana Johnson. Grandson of Mimi down in Gadsden, Alabama, along with granddaddy. A load of Big J in Lacey Springs, Alabama, and Nana in Panama City Beach, Florida. Caden Johnson on for his sixth appearance of the year, second in relief. 2.81 ERA, 16 innings of work, giving up only 10 hits, six runs, five earned, 16 walks, 24 strikeouts. He will face four, five, and six in the Cumberland lineup to try to preserve the victory for the Pioneers and get an inning of work in. Caden Birch, Ben Sills, and Wyatt Hurt scheduled. First pitch in there at the knees for a called strike to the six foot four Bessemer Academy Alabama product. Swing and a miss. Johnson with the lid release. Oh, on the count, 0-2. Oh, Got that hair tied down pretty good today, though. Trying to make quick work of Caden Birch, but that fastball misses out. Birch walked in the first, grounded out in the third, and had an infield single in the fourth inning. He's one for two. One-two pitch. Sliced into right field. Talk about a Inside out swing right there. Caden Birch muscles one out in the right field for a leadoff single. Now two for three. Ben Sills. It's a seven hit, seventh hit of the game for Cumberland. Eight hits for the Pioneers. Now is a perfect time for a dude at double play as Ben Sill steps to the plate. Duo pitch. Long look at first, and the delivery is high. Count now goes three balls and no strikes. Johnson in danger of walking Sills. See if he can climb the mountain. Come on back. It's a called strike there on the inside corner at the knees. Sills hit by a pitch, had an infield single, struck out looking. He's also one for two. Nepper and Molnar in double play depth. Foul ball off to the right side. Gets out of play, and Johnson has come back to even the count. It's full. Full count ministries, full count. Johnson has to pump a third straight strike in there. And he does not. First two have reached. Cooper Anderson went two innings, no hits, no runs. Walked one, struck out four. Sam Folks will come out of the dugout and have a chat with Caden Johnson. Game two should start a Approximately 30 minutes after the conclusion of this ball game. So I would say it'd be about four or 345 possibly. Depending on when this one finishes up. Sam Folks has had his say and he'll come back to the Pioneer dugout. Daniel Rios letting everybody know that is Visit number, I don't know, one maybe. I don't keep track of that. It's not my job. 
Wyatt Hurt struck out three times today. Caden Johnson would like to have him wear the golden sombrero. Either that or hit a ground ball, hard hit ground ball to Landon Luterman for a triple play. I don't know who our sponsor is. Wyatt Hurt squaring around a bunt. Great move there. Pitches outside. Down by one. Go ahead and move two runners into scoring position. One ball, one strike, Mr. Milton. The umpire is letting you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Braxton Alexander let the people know that Brody was in the middle of a big stretch. That's square around a bunt again. Bunt's foul. Now down in the count, one ball, two strikes. That'll be interesting to see if Drew Lowe, the head coach here at the JV squad, will have him bunting with two strikes. He is not squaring around. Breaking pitch misses outside. Caden Birch led off with a single to right. Ben Sills walked on a full count pitch. Luke Man Manning standing on deck. 2-2 Two -two pitch misses down. Johnson. Going to have to deliver another full count ministries, full count pitch to Wyatt Hurt. And he does, and he gets Wyatt swinging for the first out. Tough day at the plate for Wyatt Hurt here in game one. Luke Manning, who's 0 for three, steps to the plate. One put pitch could end the game. Ball State leads six to five. We're in the final inning of game one. Uh, we'll begin the live stream for game two, probably five minutes before game time, or as soon as I get everything ready. There's a strike called at the knees. Jaron Kaiser is standing in the on deck circle. the pitcher for the JV squad. Breaking pitch in there. Nice pitch by Caden Johnson to the right-hander, and he's ahead in the count 0-2. Timeout called by Christian Dunn. That's first timeout. Defensive timeout there. They count all these timeouts. We're trying to speed these games along. 0-2. Oh, one out, two on. That pitch almost looked like a cross Christian up. Expecting a breaking pitch, but wasn't expecting it there. One, two count. Redshirt sophomore comes set. Looks back at second and delivers. Popped up at will get out of play in MGM Industries foul ball. As the clouds have shown up here in Middle Tennessee. Seventy-five degrees here in Gallatin. The one, two, swing and a miss, and the ball in the dirt. Christian needs to just hang on to it. And it is strikeout number two. Now batting number two, Jaron Kaiser. It's up to Jaron Kaiser. He's 0 for 2, walked and scored in the fourth. He would like a chance to go out and pitch again in the bottom of the seventh if he does it's going to be up to him he's going to look at a called strike on the outside corner Caden Johnson trying to end it here though a 
Thomas Bowl misses out. Looking forward to the rest of my Club Supreme number nine from Jersey Mike's. Had half of it before this game. Going to chow down on the other half in between games. Located right across the street. Just missed. I'm guessing down on that pitch. Julie Garrett Johnson, the general manager over there, and Michelle Fuller, the marketing director for Jersey Mike's in Gallatin. 940 Memory Lane. Strike on the inside corner at the letters. You know, the Cumberland JV down to their last strike. Two balls, two strikes. Tying run on its second. Now we're going to go to an, the third full count, Ministry's full count of the inning. Runners will be on the hop here. Ball in the gap, probably going to score two. Puts a little more pressure on your defense. Ground ball to an infielder, probably going to have to throw to first. Full count pitch. Swing and a miss. And Caden Johnson strikes out the side to end this ball game. Come back with a full count swinging strike three. And the Pioneers take game one, six to five. Winning pitcher will be Cooper Anderson. I believe that is going to be Cooper's first win, first collegiate win. Congratulations, Cooper Anderson. The loss will go to Grant Charlton. I don't have any stats for Cumberland JV, so I don't know what that is on his record. But a save goes to Caden Johnson. That's his first save of the year. All State moves to 6-11 and 11 on the season. And our Toyota of Gallatin player of the game. I'm going to go with Cooper Anderson. Two innings, no hit, no run baseball. Did walk one, but struck out four. Got his first win of his collegiate career. Congratulations to Cooper Anderson, our Toyota of Gallatin player of the game from Ravenwood High School. And our full count ministries verse of the game is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. It says, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Thank you to Mimi down in Gadsden, Alabama. For that good word, Braxton Alexander, that's a good word. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Let you contemplate on that. Thank you, Mimi, and thank you, Full Count Ministries, for the use of broadcast equipment here on the Ball State Sports Network as well. Ball State takes game one. Hopefully you'll come back for game two of the doubleheader day. If not, appreciate you joining us. Big shout out to Athletic Director Bobby Hudson back from the TWCAA Conference Basketball Tournament down in Motlow State. Probably taking a well-deserved day off. Might be listening in on the broadcast, but I'd like to thank him for the opportunity to broadcast these games, along with head coach Jim McGuire. This is Tim Reese saying so long for right now. Thanks for listening to the Ball State Sports Network.